Here today to talk to you about something that coaches face all the time. How do I scale my business? Running a one-to-one -one or one-on-one -on -one agreement type coaching practice can be very time consuming. You may see other coaches doing group coaching programs and things that are scalable. You may wonder, how can I do that? Well, make sure you stay to the end. I'm also going to give you a little bit of a tip of how to get a resource uh, to help you do that step by step. Now you may say to yourself, Stephanie, I don't have a group coaching program. And I'm here to tell you that you do. It's just all inside your head. Uh, so think about what you would cover with an average client in a one-to-one -one coaching program. What are the things they achieve? What are the things they're challenged with? What are some of the outside resources or topics that you bring in to support them? So we realize that there are many different kinds of coaches out there, B2B, B2C, people that do leadership coaching, health coaching, life coaching, uh, career coaching. There's many different types of coaches out there that serve a wide variety of clients. So I've done both B2B and B2C coaching, both one-to-one -one and one-to-many programs. And I've also done a lot of training and facilitation. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how I blended those two to really create a viable group coaching model. So for my example, I'm going to use leadership coaching. So I've done a lot of leadership coaching and I've done some group leadership coaching programs. So I think about, well, what do I usually cover when I'm working with a leader uh, in a coaching agreement? Uh, I may talk about their leadership style. We may look at emotional intelligence. We may look at their communication style. We may look at some of their leadership goals, their long-term goals. And I think about all the content that I may experience in that one-on-one -on -one agreement. And then I think about all the topics that we might touch on in that one-on-one -on -one agreement. And that starts to become a curriculum. So all you really even need to do is sit down and make a list of all the topics, challenges, ideas that you cover in a one-to-one -one coaching program. And then as you start to make that list, you start to see some of it makes sense. Right, so let's say you have six engaged individuals for a group coaching program. Now I know what you're thinking, Stephanie, where did they come from? How did I market to them? I'm gonna share that with you in a minute. Uh, so you have six engaged individuals. You might start out that initial session maybe setting some goals, maybe having people introduce themselves to each other. Maybe you do a first hot topic of understanding your leadership style, perhaps you use an assessment, right? And you have everybody now learn from each other in addition to learning from you. Now, you can do some group coaching on a group coaching call. You can do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and have people observe and see what they see. You can also do some training on a hot topic. So for example, what would a typical session look like? Let's say you arrived at session three and you have six leaders and they've set some goals. You might kick off a session with some progress from their goals, have people share wins, have people share challenges. Then you might use a hot topic. Let's, for example, say emotional intelligence. And you might share a little about emotional intelligence. And then you might do some coaching about how that impacts what each person is working on right now. Where do they see that present in some of the challenges they, they face or some of the opportunities for growth they have? And as you see, the same things that would make a one-on-one -on -one coaching session rich uh, and fulfilling for a coachee uh, are the same things that would actually make a group coaching experience very fulfilling. And people get to learn again from each other. They get to hear each other's ideas. They get to network. Uh, they get to learn and grow from their own experience and from the experience of others. Now, you may say, Stephanie, wait a minute, where are all these clients coming from? Um, so I'm gonna share that with you. If you're listening to this, you may have become coaching for a while, uh, or maybe you've just started coaching and maybe you are just dipping your toe in the water of what it looks like to be a coach. Chances are you might have been doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching already and you've had some clients and some client work under your belt. So your previous clients are actually the perfect opportunity for you to test out a group coaching program. You don't need to get 50 people. You don't need to go in a room for six months and design every resource. This is sort of a little bit of a test run for your group coaching program. So I want you to think of clients you've worked with in the past or perhaps clients that maybe couldn't afford your one-on-one -on -one coaching package but really wanted to work with you or that you had a good rapport with. You craft individual personal emails to those people and maybe people that you have in mind that you haven't worked with, maybe that you've met or that you know that might benefit from your program. And you just put together a very personal email, ask them how they are. Uh, if there's someone who's worked with you in the past, just reference, hey, you know, I'm wondering how you're doing with X or Y, or how are the kids? You know, be real, be personal with people. And share with them that you're doing a new program. It's a group coaching program. You're offering, you know, a special opportunity for people that are in your circle or that you've worked with before. And here are some of the benefits. And maybe list four or five outcomes that they can expect from working with you. And these outcomes are not something 
something you pick out of air. Think about the outcomes that people do get when they do work with you in a one-on-one -on -one coaching engagement. And maybe you wanna set up a brief call to discuss with them what the program is, when it's going to be. Um, and I'm sure you have so many questions about marketing, tech, uh, B2B versus B2C. I would too. Uh, and so I've kind of dumped all of my, uh, my ideas and the things that have worked for me and the things that have worked for coaches that I've worked with into a special resource called Creating Winning Group Coaching Programs. And if you click right below, you'll be able to access uh, that guide. And it kind of goes into some of those details that you may feel were missing from this brief video. A lot of times we think we've got a sort of go away to a cabin somewhere in the woods and design this perfect group coaching program, manage every second of it, every second of the agenda, every resource. And often that's really not the way you wanna start. You really wanna just sort of dip your toe in the water, get started, maybe work with some people you've worked with in the past, and then you can iterate, then you can change, then you can up level, um, then you can look at what are some best practices for online marketing or what are other ways that I can get people into this group coaching program. But if you've been struggling to go from one to one, to one to many for a long time, it's worth it to just sort of start, right? Uh, and just sort of get yourself out there and see what's possible. So I hope you'll check out our guide uh, and thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Hey, if you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a like and click that subscribe button. Want to learn more about Cloverleaf? Head over to cloverleaf.me or reach out to us at sales at cloverleaf.me.